Well, I have an enigma. The car was all over the place, completely erratic. You start it, it would start, and then it would stop. I reckon the first problem is probably the cold start valve, so I'm going to check that. The second problem is probably the warm-up valve, or it could be some other problem. And what we're going to do is diagnose what's wrong with the poor bugger. Uh, you can see I've got my rags on and it's bloody freezing, that's why I've got a scarf on. Here we go. And uh, here's the cold start valve here. And if you look down there, the, the wirings, you can see, it's starting to go manky. Well, actually, nearly all the wiring on the car is manky because the car is 39 years old. So anyway, what I'm going to do is take that plug off, put a, a voltmeter on it, and see if we get any voltage when I turn it on to kick it over. Well, I just took the plug off, put a couple of leads on to the, to the multimeter here. I made it so I could see from the inside and when I turned the uh, ignition on and everything, went to crank the engine, it got the voltage. So we know the voltage is there. Right, what I'm going to do now is uh, pull off the uh, cold start valve. I just took that hose off, it goes into the uh, idle speed thing, just so I can get at the uh, the uh, Allen head screws down here at 5 mil, 5 mil key. Uh, probably unbolt that, loosen off the other end up here just to move it out of the way and clamp it up again. Then I'll get a container and crank the engine and see if any fuel comes out of it. Just undone it, moved it out of the way. I'll find some sort of container to go underneath it. Right, I'll put the plug back on. I've put a little bit of a container underneath it. Actually, it's a piece of a milk carton. I just cut it in a piece off the end. Okay, now I'm going to crank the engine and see if anything comes out. Well, not good for me. Uh, no petrol came out of it. I just got a 12 mil spanners and undid that uh, joint there to make sure there was fuel behind it. And as you can see, it leaked down into it. It's had fuel behind it. So obviously the solenoid's not working anymore it's got power and everything but it's not doing anything so I'm up for a new cold start valve rightio I just ran a test of the fuel pump relay now this is not much fun at all I'll show you where it is so you know in future because I had to find the rotten bloody thing okay we'll go in here's your fuse box and everything Throw that one out of the way. Let the camera adjust a bit. Right, the fuel pump relay is this one. I don't know if you can see. I'll try. It's top left. This other relay here, I don't know what it is, but it's associated with it. I gave it a tap and I had done the bolt the front relays out of the way to get to it and I'm going to buy a spare one because I think I might because the car is 39 years old and you mightn't be able to get another one. Uh, check that okay by the way. Right this is what you've got to check on the base of the fuel pump relay. You make sure there's voltage on uh, terminal 2 to earth. Next you, uh, you make sure your air flow sensor plate is in a zero position and you check across from terminal 4 and 5 if you get 12 volts it's zero next uh, uh, what we do when we open it so I just put a pair of flies in to hold it open and you should get zero volts between 4 and 5 which I did that's good next test is uh, you activate the starter motor uh, that's just uh, power up uh, for the relay and that's one to earth if you get 12 volts that's good next is uh, checking the activation of the fuel pump uh, you measure the voltage between 2 and 3 
you should get 12 volts with the ignition turned on that is and that's about it then you know the fuel pump works and everything and the, the engine <laughs> it says here engine is idle running or not running if it's not running you renew the relay okay well the next thing I was going to look at is this uh, warm-up compensator and it says check the voltage from the plug here you should get 12 volts with the engine running and guess what I didn't get 12 volts so now I've got to go and study the wiring diagrams and see where this feeds from then I come back again well this is a bummer I'm not getting the voltage at all through that and it's supplied from terminal 3 of the uh, uh, fuel pump relay and terminal 3 also supplies the actual fuel pump and well, we know that's working and uh, I, I changed the uh, fuel pump relay but uh, as far as I was concerned the old one had nothing wrong with it now I'm going to change the petrol filter because I bought that because it was like it was starved of fuel and just kept stopping I'll just run it again See? Bloody thing's going. So, what is it? What's the problem? I think maybe it's got a bit warmed up and uh, maybe it's uh, no good under 50 degrees. Anyway, there's only one way to find out and that's wait until it cools down. Meanwhile, I'll change the, the uh, fuel filter. The first thing you do is disconnect the battery and have a fire extinguisher hanging around just in case. Okay, jack the car up and we undo a bolt up here, bolt on the other side there and take off the plastic uh, shroud. That's the petrol filter up here. Next, get a container just to catch some petrol if it comes out. It probably will be a little bit. A 17mm spanner and under the banjo fitting up there and the fitting at the other end there there and there okay there's a couple of screws on here you loosen and then you just slide the filter out I've dumped him down there just to drain a bit of uh, petrol out of it okay slide your new filter in I've slid, slid it in and I've just put up the uh, the banjo nut and the other nut at the other end finger tight at present. I'm going to tighten it up and reclamp it. Make sure the fuel is flowing in the direction of the arrow. It has an arrow on it and uh, just make sure the flu that's the direction of the fuel flow. Okay. Okay, next uh, reconnect the battery, run the engine and check if there's any leaks. I had a leak coming out of the uh, banjo one up here. I had to tighten up again. It uh, seems to be okay now. Throw the plastic cover back on, lower the car down, and that's it. Fill the chain. Well, here we are, back on the car. It's a few days later. I've uh, ordered a new, uh, or well, no, I ordered a, a cold start valve from eBay, you cannot afford to buy these valves, they're so expensive. Um, the only problem with that is you, you hope the bloody thing works once it comes in. But that's not really the problem with the car. That just helps it with the cold start. Um, what I've been doing is concentrating on the uh, warm-up valve, uh, some width on the internet described that it. it should be a pressure control valve for the fuel and that's how important it is. I've tested the wire for the heater for the warm-up regulator back to the uh, fuel pump relay uh, because it switches with the uh, fuel pump when that runs and uh, it bells out okay. The uh, wire that goes for the negative doesn't bell out okay and uh, so now I'm going to 
uh, connect the wire onto the negative to the frame of the car, uh, put the fuel pump relay back in and see if we get power on this plug that powers up the warm-up regulator. Right, um, I ran it, got this wire going down to the frame of the car and we got voltage. So now I'm going to plug it back on and see what happens. Well, uh, so far I've started up first go. Whoops. And so far it's running on all cylinders. And it's not missing or anything. I'll give it a rev up and see what happens. Bit of a backfire there. What I'll do is make this wire permanent now. Uh, I'll have to trim the other one and put this one to frame. Right, I tapped in here, cut that wire and uh, run a new wire down to the frame of the car down here. Bolt down there. I'll end up having to rewire all this car one day. Um, the wiring is baked hard and it's a pain in the bum. I'm going to run the car again now and probably have to redo the idle mixture and all that sort of thing but I'll, I'll run it out of the garage so the fumes don't get us. Well uh, what a difference uh, a warm-up regulator makes. Uh, the guy who said really they should call it the fuel pressure regulator is 100% correct. The car just doesn't run if it's not running. Well, we still have a slight miss. Well, I finally uh, found what my slight miss was. It's a spark plug. Spark plug down here was bridged out with carbon deposits. These plugs have uh, only been in the car for a year. Don't worry about that bit of oil, that's only uh, stuff from where I was mucking around on the car. I'll show you what I mean. I scraped the carbon deposits of it, but uh, it was bridging out across here, uh, and when I looked up the guide, it said, oh, well, just clean the spark plug. Huh. It just said build up a carbon deposit, so it must be a common occurrence. Okay, I've got to throw the thing back together. But just to change the spark plugs on this car is a nightmare. Well, I just took the car for a run around the block, big block, and it's running back on all eight cylinders, and uh, everything's well with the world again. So the problem was the uh, warm-up valve, which is critical and uh, the heating element of that wasn't working and uh, which is electrical problem and uh, it, I now know how critical the, the warm-up regulator is uh, like the man says it should be called a fuel regulator and the other miss problem was a gunked up uh, spark plug bridged out so it's just a lot of carbon comes through that cylinder Next episode, I'm changing the uh, fuel injectors and we'll clean out the fuel distributor, the carbon from that dirt. So that's it for today. See you later.